Okay, so welcome, Lucy, to our kind of uh, second in our portfolio series. Um, it's really lovely to have you here today, and um, I know that you've got some beautiful work to show us. So, hi, I'm Lucy. I graduated last year, so I guess I'm going to talk about my portfolio, but it's kind of geared towards interview and like prep for like showing it in an interview. Um, so, the first slide. I have shown the layout of it. So how? I, so the way I laid it out was to pile everything within one project on top of each other, um, or on top of each project. So I chose three main projects that I wanted to talk about, um, and then I laid them out so when I was in an interview, I would be able to basically talk through the project from start to finish. So I would lay, lay it out so I had the concept board, colour board, visualisations, and then designs actually there with the project because it just helped um, in an interview to like have it all there ready. And it was also a good prompt, so if you were worried that you might think about what you wanted to say next, it would almost be there ready. So they were the three main projects I included. Um, I would say if you only have two projects that you really love, I would just include the two. Like There's no point like whacking one in just to fill up space, because it might detract from the work you've already done. Um, what else did I write? Um, yeah, I think that was it. I had so when I finished uni, I had loads of boards, um, and some of the boards that I didn't end up putting in the portfolio, I did really like. But I decided just to stick to the three projects, include everything from those projects, um, and not put anything else in that might confuse the person that you're having the interview with. Um, so I just kept to those three things, and I chose projects that I could explain the whole the whole thing from start to finish can i ask a question uh, lucy and when you say boards mm -hmm. were they actual board or were they thick paper so mine were all on boards which looking back um has made the portfolio quite heavy so i think if you're doing a project now and you haven't already started the concept board it might be a good idea to do it on paper and then you can maybe put more in but I, I just chose to um, choose three because they do make it quite heavy. Um, so, yeah, I think the layout. On the next slide, I've shown a closer image of one of those um, just to show, like, what it would look like when I get to that part of the portfolio and everything that I've wanted to include. Um, I've also done a video, which I'll show you at the end, which shows me literally flicking through. Um, which might help to show it more as a visual. Really. Um, I also, so as well, I've put their drawings and processes because I feel like um, if you've got a big part of a project was about a particular process, so I used a lot of hand-eye sublimation. So within a project, I would print out and mount a, um example of that process. So it would help me explain when I got to that project and if it was already there mounted rather than in a sketchbook it was just very easy to talk about rather than having to like rummage through everything else to explain the project um so this one is about mounting so throughout the portfolio I chose to mount everything on the same size paper just because I thought it might make it look a bit better as I'm flicking through it and then it would look a bit more cohesive so I mounted everything onto really thick paper. I think it was 220 GSM, just so it didn't go um, tatty as quickly. Um, and luckily it's all fine at the moment, but I think the minute that the corners start to go a bit funny, I would like trim them or remount them, just because it makes it look a bit better. Um, and I mounted them in a combination of ways. So the second one in, I just it doesn't look like it's in the middle there, but it's like bang in the middle of the page. Um, then I also, on some of the others, I paired them with one that complemented it, so on the first image. I think that was um, for, it was for packaging, for like spa products, so I put, it was the idea that the floral one would be maybe the front of the packaging and the other one would complement it by being the inside, so I put two together that worked from the same project. Lucy, um, are, these, are these all digital prints or are they painted out? The... Uh, they're all digital apart from the one at the right. Those are both painted. And the one 
one of them's a leaf print, but the rest of them were original drawings, but I digitally printed them. Um, the For that project there, the one at the far right, all of my final designs were um, fabrics. It was a fashion project. So all the ones I've mounted were original drawings because that's all I had um, paper-wise. And then the third picture is two visualisations from my final major project, which I just wanted to talk about in interviews. So instead of like having them within a sketchbook, I brought them out and mounted them because it was just easier than they'd all be there. Um, so if there's anything in particular that you really like about sketchbook or about a research folder, you could always like bring it out and mount it on nice paper and put it with that project. So it might help to explain it a bit more. It's really lovely, that chair visualisation, <clears throat> because it's just a hint, isn't it? The corner of a chair, but it says so much. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that a conscious decision? Um, I think so. I can't remember. <laughs> I think I just looked for loads of really high quality pictures of chairs and then just chose one that I looked, thought looked quite nice. I think I mm. like the pink background of it because it came through. But yeah, I did like that one. Um, what, was, what was the reason for using this this one here that's quite plain? What, what was the reason for that? So that was um, part of my project. Um, I had my colour palette and that particular colour was I called Pastel Rita Pink because it was inspired by that cafe in Montreal where all the walls and interiors and everything is that particular colour pink like there's no other colour in there so I used it as my visualisation to like round up the project I guess but that was part of my inspiration. I also put that I didn't use any plastic wallets or anything because I thought it would I didn't really like the shine and also I had a lot of things that were quite tactile and I thought like with textiles you don't really want like it would be better for like a graphic design student to have plastic sheets whereas it's nicer to like fill everything. Um, we always say it's a big no-no plastic sheets Yeah, <laughs> because you can't that it actually stops you seeing your designs in a way. And it, the light like bounces off it and you can't see it. Yeah. It gets dirty quite quickly I found because I used to have them but I didn't like them in the end. I, when I was like planning this I, I was thinking that having a digital sketchbook isn't really like in terms of an interview it isn't really that much of a problem because they tend to like be a bit annoying in interviews like they're quite heavy to carry you obviously you kind of have to pick one because otherwise you can't really carry them all and sometimes they could get a bit distracting because like I found in some interviews I would give them my sketchbook and say oh feel free to flick through this but then they wouldn't really know where to look and also sometimes um, there might be something in the way, like there might be a painting in the corner that you didn't really like or annotation that's in the way. So I found that although I did bring that one sketchbook, which is the top left-hand corner and the picture below it, I found it much more useful to print out mini sketchbooks as I went along. Um, so to fit in with each of the three main projects in my portfolio, I kind of um, bulldog clipped a few pages that I'd taken from my sketchbook and printed out onto nice paper and maybe put like a bit of ribbon or something to like make it look more like a sketchbook um, and I felt that was quicker because when I was talking about that project I could quickly flick through like five pages rather than like trying to find a specific page of my big sketchbook to show them so I found that actually worked a lot better so I made like a colour book which is the picture in the with the different colour pairs on in the right hand corner. And I also made um, inspiration books where I bought or clipped pages for my sketchbook together. And then for my final major project, I made a lookbook, which was quite nice in a way that it was like more of a curated sketchbook. So I didn't have any annotation. I just had pictures that I and printed out. So I did my lookbook with Contrado and it was £20, which was quite good if anyone wanted to make one. The last one is lots of little bits that I kind of put in that I would judge on the interview whether to show or not based on like time and if I could tell that they were running out of time or they wanted me to round it up quickly. So at the very beginning I had the most recent project that I'd done, which was an internship, which is photos on the left. And they were, um, so I had a big, um, big A3 sheets clipped together I think I had like four um, that I 
were one, were my favourites from that internship. And then I also had a book which was made of plastic wallets where I had all the designs I'd done. And I went on an interview where someone was really interested in it, interested in it. So I like ended up going through it in much more. Whereas if it wasn't a fashion interview, I'd probably skip past that a bit quicker. But I think if you've got something that's like a recent experience, I'd put that first because it's quite good to talk about. Um, and then I had three small projects which I had at the back of my portfolio, which, based on time and whether they were relevant, I would show them or not. I had my Finisterre sketchbook, um, my SDC colour book, and also my jewel project, which were ones that didn't need loads of backup and didn't need a sketchbook or boards to explain. They were just quite visual projects. Um, and I liked all of the projects. Like, I wouldn't put anything in that you don't like because um, then it would attract me everything you've just shown. But they were ones that, like, I've been on interviews where they've wanted to see more and they've, like, you could tell they they weren't ready for it to finish. And I've also been on some where you can tell they're a bit more conscious of time and they want it to be a bit more snappy. So I would kind of judge whether I showed those or not at the time. Um, and they were also just ones that were very visual that I could talk about and that I liked, but weren't my three main ones. So I just... Or, I know you said to talk about a little bit about my digital portfolio. Um, I've only used Adobe Spark and Squarespace, so I can talk about those. Um, so when I graduated, I had a digital portfolio with Adobe Spark, which was really good. Like I really liked it. I used it for all my interviews. Um, it's good if you can add it to a link of something. So I'd have it in the link of my Instagram, or if you're sending it through email, it's great. It's not so good if you um if someone just asks you for your for your portfolio because it's come to be a really long um url which it's hard to remember um so that one was really good and obviously it's free um but since i've started i've set up my website in 2020 um through squarespace which i now use um as my portfolio as well i just send people to the portfolio page of my website um which is good, it's quite expensive, which I didn't realise when I set it up, because it, I wanted to add a shop, so I think if you're going to add a shop, it becomes quite expensive, um, which I didn't really realise. But yeah, those two, in terms of digital portfolios, are really handy, and if you wanted to get some inspiration or ideas, then you can always have a look at those. And then I do a lot of advertising on Instagram as well, which is obviously free, and I mean, it, it's a good, good place to link people to your website okay so that the first one is the work from my internship that I had at the beginning so I've got the sheets I would talk about and then a book if I was going to go into more detail with it but I would kind of judge that on the interview and then I would go into my first project so I had everything like lined up ready so I've got the samples that I would talk through um and obviously I would talk a bit more about everything and like Sometimes they would ask to see something in more detail. It wouldn't be like as regimented as that. Um, but I would have everything there. And then I've got the big sheets. In, in this video, I've not actually put my most recent project first. I think I was meant to have my final major first. It's actually last. But I think it's important to have like the most recent project in front. But just the way I've laid it out is really helpful for me in interviews to like not be thought and just to remember like what comes next it almost, almost helps you explain the project from start to finish and if you have a particular process you know you want to talk about they're mounted on a sheet you're not going to forget to talk about it so that's what I found helpful um so yeah that page with the sheet showing my original drawings um and then I've got some digital as well So this is the start of my final major project. So I've got the samples and then my lip book and my inspiration book and I will be talking about all of those with everyone. Lucy, do you always coordinate your um, nail varnish with your <laughs> I do take photos. I always plan what colour to put on. <laughs> it just shows how a collection can start to work. I mean, you can see that a lot of those designs are all kind of working together. And those lovely simple ones you've got there as well. Sometimes you don't have to use many colours. I end up always using similar colours for every product, just 
by chance. But I think I was being quite picky. And so those, those two books there are the books that I just show if I need to. And then that is Jules, which I also only get out if I feel like they want to see more. Or if it was if it was a children's library, so I would have put that earlier on. But if it's not, I would just have it at the back and it would just be something to talk about if they wanted to know more. But if not, I would sort of judge it on into. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Whoops, I've started it all again. All right. <laughs> That was absolutely fantastic to see all that lovely work. So we've got a few questions here. Oh, just Flora just says that that pear print is absolutely stunning. Um, Flora, which one? Which one are you talking about? Because there were quite a few of those. Um, the one where it was like the bold colours and they were sort of like layered against each other when they were like laid out. It was so pretty. Yeah, I think that was the front colour book. India. Do you use any other type of social media other than Instagram? No, not at the moment. But I, so if anyone is looking to like set up their own brand or anything, um, or start selling their work, I would recommend to look at everything that Elizabeth Styles, S T I L E S, has done. So she's done loads and loads of free free lives on Instagram, um, and to watch all of those, they're so helpful. And she at the moment she's been talking a lot about TikTok so I really need to get on TikTok um, because apparently it can be amazing to like direct people to your Instagram and also just to like promote things through there so that is on my list but apart from that I'm only on Instagram and um, also she's been talking a lot about it as well I just haven't done it yet. Hi um, can I just ask and do you get much freelance work or since you finished university? Um, yeah so through my Instagram I've been getting quite a lot of like custom prints for people and recently like without planning it I've started doing quite a lot of pet commissions because someone just asked for one and I posted about it and I seem to be getting quite a lot of those so I'm just going with it but um, I've also so I've done a few with bigger brands so through a family friend I did um, some designs for a, an apartment block in Manchester quite recently so in terms of like bigger commissions I've been doing a few um, but day to day I do get a lot of freelance like commissions from people and that's through my Instagram and like my website and then on the alongside I also work as a freelance print designer for a company called Bonnie Print Studio um, which I do part-time but the commissions and the freelance work mainly come from my website. And uh, Flora do you want to ask your question? Yeah I was just looking at um your social media and like website from the chat and it's got like a really strong sense of branding and I was just sort of wondered how you found that for yourself. Um, thank you, that's really fun. I literally changed, so my website and my Instagram I've changed to Studio Lucy like two days ago. So my website, I created my website about a year ago and the domain name and everything was about to expire or renew for another year so I thought it would be a good time to change it and to like upgrade it because I'm I want to start doing more like clothing and accessories um, and I wanted a name that was a bit more like a brand rather than like a portfolio um so I've changed my um, name and branding to match it literally like two days ago 